What's going on everyone, it's Joshua here, Future from Micro Reviews. I talk movies, TV, music, giving you guys my Scorsese review series leading up to his latest film, Killers of the Flower Moon. And now, I don't know how long this will probably take because of the personal situation that I've been talking about. But, I figured this would be something fun to do. Like since Killers of the Flower Moon is coming out, I figured I'd go do every Scorsese review and movie in his filmography. And if this is your first time here, all of my socials are in the description box from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the way up to my serialized as well as my cash app if you'd like to send money and donate to the channel. Be sure to use my movie palette as the thing in the show. And with that, let's talk about some more Scorsese. So, you may be wondering what has me doing this. Now, I am basically reviewing the Martin Scorsese's filmography leading up to Killers of the Flower Moon. And I figured he has a lot of movies, so I don't know how long this will take, but I figured with. Martin Scorsese and his track record movies. Some of these will probably be double reviews because of what's going on and my equipment is not here with me. Some of these will be be standalone collabs, but we're gonna have fun and and also with this, I just hope to at least have fun reviewing more older stuff as much as the new stuff still got a lot of stuff i had to catch up on but i'll get it done do even despite the worst circumstances but with that being said we're gonna kick this off and we will try it out with one of these first two movies i'm going to be a little bit softer talking because i don't want to be too loud so We're going to start with Who's That Knocking at My Door. This was his first film. And this follows a streetwise New Yorker who falls in love with a local girl and decides to settle down. But he has trouble dealing with something of her past due to his upbringing, as I should say. So, that's basically what we're dealing with here. And this was Martin Scorsese's first feature film as a director released in 1967 and he explores the themes of guilt catholic guilt similar to in his future film we'll get to which is mean streets and this is a pretty interesting experiment this now this isn't his best to date but you got we have to start somewhere when it comes to martin scorsese and martin scorsese is one of the best filmmakers out there despite what you may think about his opinions on marvel and movies and stuff the guy even at 80 years old he has not missed a step so we're starting this off with who's that knocking at the door and oh no i thought this first scorsese movie was fine it's definitely not the most amazing thing out there but i have to tell you this is actually way better than i thought it was going to be now of course the criticisms that does keep this afloat this was my second time watching this having watched this during the worst year of my life 2020 this is amazing to see how an accomplished director who is celebrated as one of the greatest directors of our time started out but this was an experimental and interesting one for sure i'll get the good things out of the way first you you do see a bit of what martin scorsese was set out to become in his direction and his execution of the story is good for the most part i like that and i feel like under 90 minutes is well paced and it gets you in and out you're not sitting there bored waiting for things to happen i can also say photography wise it's solid enough despite it being a very small budget but 
sometimes you don't always have to have the biggest budget to make a movie you have to use what you got i always say this in a few of my videos and execution wise is very good i that's one thing i constantly keep saying in my videos especially now you have you can have a good idea but if you don't execute it your movie will not do good or even a tv show cinematography wise i think the cinematography is very solid enough and technically wise is done very well as far as editing as far as the music goes and i think acting here from the two leads harvey cattell and xena beftoon is very good here the supporting cast members is not as much supporting cast members as you expect but this was one of his very first movies so you do have to give a little bit of credit to what he was able to get he even have a cameo by his own mom here so i will say the cast there is very good there and i will say that it, the, he does very good in the cinematography in the acting department but it's really harvey cattell and cena bethune who has to do a lot of the layer work here because their characters of course it's pretty much they're not the best characters Scorsese's ever created but i do think that for the time you do understand what they were going for going into the bad of the movie i'll just get my little negatives out of the way here the story while it's executed properly and you do see a hint of what scorsese will ultimately become the story itself isn't much home to run about and at times it does not to keep bringing this franchise up but it does kind of go into a toxic sexual territory but it's not as bad as something like the front the movie series i will never speak of again because i don't want to re remember those movies but it kind of feels like that at times but it's nowhere near on the level of that and the writing isn't the strongest of obviously obviously you gotta take into account this was his first movie and for most of the movie while the performances are strong enough and while it was very experimental i was kind of bored with this a few times but it wasn't the put to the point where i was just like get to the points it was just seeing the fact that there were moments where i was kind of not very good now the natural relationship between these two characters i do like that and you have but it just nose dies with a souring taste what the relationship definitely goes to that erotic turn and a little and it does there are some shots in this movie that goes on for way too long and some hyperkinetic editing is a little bit much and the final twists and turns and the end of the movie and the character decisions that goes through not really buying it again that's more the script part you know what it was more scorsese's first movie i will cut him some slack there because i do feel like he's doing a good job at what he set out to do and for that i do have to give him credit to what credit is due so all in all with that i gotta say this is not his best film but i gotta say that who's that knocking on my door was a very solid start to what will become a career legend their career of martin scorsese is not the greatest movie out there it's definitely these guys issues when it comes to some writing and some the relationship aspects and some of that stuff there but ultimately i did walk away very much really enjoying this and i thought it was interesting to see 
this. So, for the first solid attempt, not one his best, but this is the, the Scorsese's greatness. So, I overall will give this a stream this thing. So, there you go. For the first Scorsese film, you're I'm gonna give this a stream this thing. Not bad one, but I thought this is actually pretty good. Oh, boxcar Bertha. Where do I begin with this? Unfortunately, so far as of doing this little filmography series, this I think is the worst in Scorsese's filmography, and this was not a very pleasant watch when I was watching this. This was my rewatch here for this, and the first time I wasn't so sure why I thought of it. This time, oh man, no. Again, this got way too experimental. Now, Boscar Bertha Thompson is a transient woman in Arkansas during the violence filled depression of the early 1930s. She meets up with the rabble rousing union man Big Bill Shelley and the two team up to fight the corrupt railroad establishment. Should be an interesting western, right? Mm mm. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope, and definitely not. I know there are some people who think this is one of his more underrated ones, but I was looking forward to this one, rewatching this one, because Martin Scorsese doing taking on an experimental western, and this is the most boring film of his, and this is one of the most boring westerns I've seen. It's not the worst movie ever, but it is very lackluster and pretty dull. So, where this movie does not work for me is is very derivative and very disinteresting story. This story, now, of course, this is a story we've seen before in plenty of other westerns, and even in execution-wise, you can get something great out of it it's not something you have to always make 100% perfect but you can always try to great execution and there's been plenty of westerns that's taken this type of story and made it interesting but where does this falls for me is that it's very disinteresting because of the pacing and the film's pacing, despite it being 88 minutes, and not to mention, this feels like Roger Corman getting his footprints all over it, which I'm not surprised, since aside from a few things he's produced, this felt heavily, overly experimental, and it is just not, not very creative. And it's just not there. And just when you feel over experimentation, it definitely feels like it's going completely over your limits. And with Roger Corman, because aside from a few things I've seen from this guy, I've not seen everything this man has produced. He has a way of being overly experimental when he's producing stuff, but he does try in what he's trying to do. And it's it's really interesting, and I will give credit to where credit is due. Scorsese does try, but it's just character. The story is very uninteresting, the pacing is very sluggish, to the point where I was almost falling asleep. And the characters here are very underdeveloped. You do have maybe one or two characters you actually care, quite care about, but even with that, 
it's just not there. The character is not as strong as it should be because you you don't really get to care much for any characters there and that's unfortunate too because there are great characters in the Scorsese's filmography you definitely do lack that here in terms of that but if I'm being on the flip side I will give the movie its merits the cinematography work here is definitely commemorable for the budget that this movie has I will say the cinematography work is definitely commendable and you do get some good work on cinematography and production design and the costume design all of that is well thought out and the few moments of action is very good too i'll give you that some of the action here for experimental as this movie was is pretty solid in the action department and the directing from Scorsese is solid once again. You can tell that this was early Scorsese, so he wasn't quite there yet, but he shows promise here. I'll give him that. I'll give him credibility. And the pacing is good mostly in spots where it's not so draggy. And I think all of the performances in the film is good. From Barbara Hershey to the late David Carradine to Barry Primus to Bernie Casey to John Carradine, all of that in the positive section I just mentioned is all pretty solid. And also, but overall, this second installment of Scorsese's filmography. Again, unfortunately, the worst in his filmography thus far is not one of the worst movies ever, but unfortunately for me, this should have been a lot better than it was. Acting is still pretty good. There are some good moments. There is some, some great moments here. The dialogue is fine, mostly. It's just the story didn't work for me. It's very sentimental. And when you really think about it, this is basically Bonnie and Clyde is the low version, low budget version, except it doesn't go any for me. Why I commend the direction, why I commend the pacing mostly, why I commend the performances. I just think that Boscar Bertha doesn't really come together a whole well as it should. So, unfortunately for me. I'm going to recommend you all, you skip this one. Well, that's going to do it for this first half of the Martin Scorsese review series. Look forward to more. Looking forward to continuing this. And with all that being said, stick around for more Scorsese reviews. Lean up to Killers of the Flower Moon. Well, that's gonna do it for the video that you just watched. I will have my channel here, so you would like to see anything here. Click the channel icon, subscribe for more. I will also leave a video and maybe a playlist here, so in case you want to see what I'm about. As always, stay up, assassins, join the up, assassins, and you guys keep it cool.